My name is Alan Kasanovich, and I'm the Painters Conservator here at the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art. Here we'll be taking a closer look at three paintings by Artemisia Gentileschi and discussing some technical aspects of each. Shown here is self-portrait as a lute player. When studying a painting, a close examination of the visible surface can be extremely informative in understanding the materials, techniques, and condition of a work of art. We will often utilize more high-tech methods, like x-radiography, to examine paintings. Shown here is an x-ray of self-portrait as a lute player, which can give us a glimpse below the visible surface. An x-ray of a painting, just like that of a human hand for instance, will show us a map of relative density. Materials of higher density will appear light, while those of a lower density will appear dark. The density may be related to the physical thickness of a material, but it can also be related to its properties on a molecular level. There are many things we can learn about a painting by looking at an x-ray. They can, for instance, help reveal aspects of its condition that may not be readily apparent. Highlighted here are two areas of loss in the original paint film. Where the lead containing paint is intact, it appears lighter. Where the paint is flicked away, it will appear much darker. Losses such as these are extremely common in a painting of this type and age. On the surface of the painting, these losses have been visually restored so they do not compromise one's ability to view the image. However, the materials used here are less dense than the original paint film, and therefore the losses remain clearly visible in the x-ray. Changes that occur during the creation of a painting can also sometimes be revealed by an x-ray. In some cases, these changes may be simple and subtle adjustments made by the artist, while in others, they can be an entirely different composition that was ultimately abandoned. Highlighted here, we could see the presence of a mysterious face below the surface. The image within the circle has been digitally altered to make this face slightly more pronounced. It is not possible to make out specific details or to even guess at the subject matter of the secondary composition, but it is clear that the canvas before us today started as something very different when Artemisia first laid paint to the surface. Other, more subtle changes, such as adjustments in the headdress and the neck of the lute, show us an artist at work constantly refining details throughout the painting process. Some areas of the painting, however, were more precisely conceived and laid out from the start. When comparing this painting to Artemisia's self-portrait as St. Catherine, it is easy to see how the primary elements of the facial features are quite similar. These align with such precision, in fact, that it suggests the use of a common design to lay out the image. Looking at the x-ray, we once again get a glimpse below the surface. In addition to the ghostly image that echoes the surface of the painting, we could see the wooden framework and the nails used to stretch the canvas. We can also see an original canvas seam near the bottom edge of the painting, and once again some small areas of paint loss. The composition overall here appears to be more faithful to the original intent, with only very minor adjustments being made by the artist throughout the painting process. Here we see another depiction of St. Catherine by Artemisia. She is once again utilizing her own likeness for this painting. However, the composition differs slightly from the others in the position of the head. Looking at the x-ray, we once again see areas of paint loss and the wooden stretcher. The image revealed by the x-ray here, however, is a little more difficult to make out. Here we see the placement of the composition that is visible on the surface of the painting. But there are at least two other variations visible below this image. Here we see one of these earlier versions highlighted. The position of the head and the alignment of the facial features differ quite significantly from the final composition. It does, however, align precisely with that of self-portrait as a lute player and self-portrait as St. Catherine. It is clear that in this earlier version, Artemisia once again intended to utilize this very same design that was the foundation of the other two paintings, before abandoning that for the image we see today. In the end, we are left with three comparable yet unique paintings that all showcase her exceptional talents as a painter.